Hello and welcome to episode number 23 of the CrossFit Harrow podcast. We are now available on Spotify and Amazon and soon to be iTunes. So you can be like, hey, Alexa, play CrossFit Harrow podcast and that bitch will turn on. Um, Today I wanted to talk to you about a slow death of social media. Social media will slowly get into your brains and slowly kill a lot of things around you. Um, Something uh, that I have learnt a lot, um, definitely as I've got older, is that smart people, and I'm not sure if these are the right words, and I think this is actually, um, uh, this is an actual saying by someone. Um, Smart people learn from everything and everyone. Average people, learn from their experiences, and stupid people already have the answers. Um, With regards to social media, um, I think we let the world, we let social media control our world when we should be in full control. We are influenced heavily by social media, um, and people get a lot of their answers um, from social media. Do they need to get them from their nose? Do they need to breed motivation or succeed from from uh, from from Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or TikTok or whatever it might be. No, but it has had that influence. Like it's kind of like where as a business a lot of people have been going to and it's an easy way to sell something that maybe uh, someone doesn't necessarily believe in but the influence is so high that people do invest. Um, and what I mean by that is like, you know, why is it when a doctor let's say, or a mechanic says that, you know, this is what you need, take it, do this, this needs changing, you know, nine times out of ten people trust in that, but a fitness professional, and I'm not talking about these fake ones on Instagram, Um, I'm talking about someone that, you know, maybe works with regularly or has a good reputation within the fitness industry uh, for for results, and not for six-week results and life-changing results in 30 days, I'm talking about life-changing results over a period of time and education. Why is it that when someone maybe on that gives you their very best advice, people still want to do it their own way because they think they know better? Um, And I do believe that it is heavily influenced by social media because this fitness may be so subjective. Um, You know, there's good doctors, there's bad doctors, great mechanics, not so good mechanics, there's great coaches and some very not so amazing coaches. And maybe because fitness is, is, is more subjective uh, in some respect, but is it really? Like, there's science behind it. And if you can understand the science, or if someone understands the science and can explain it to you very well through uh, how you train, through how you eat, through how you live your lifestyle, like, there isn't a secret. The, all, all the answers are out there. If you listen back to all these episodes of the podcast, the answers, you're, you're given these answers. Um, so, you know, I want to clarify something that if someone does have one million followers on Instagram, but doesn't necessarily mean, that doesn't necessarily mean, sorry, that what they say is right. Followers and likes are not the holy grail. It's not to suggest that they are any better than anyone else out there. Um, It's just the influence that it has on people. Um, There are many people in this world who have created accounts on social media that have high followers. Let's say, you know, someone who's even created an account for their dog or cat, they've got more followers than me or, or even the gym. That doesn't mean they're more qualified to give advice on a fucking cat or dog. So why do we second guess what, like, I'm talking fitness professionals. Um, why, do we think no, why do we think we know better? Not someone who over quarantine has turned themselves into a personal trainer and just kind of pop videos up online and because it's got someone active doing it. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. You, this is where we need to have a big divide between, as I said before, fitness as professionals as a career and, and fitness as a, as a hobby. Um, and I know this doesn't apply to all our listeners, but maybe there's some of you that could say, yeah, that was probably me at one point, or maybe you're still learning that element of trust in the people that you're working with. Um, and I'm not directing this, you know, to anyone personally. This is a general uh, consensus of, of kind of where I feel the industry is at, just through uh, me monitoring certain social media or, or even having certain conversations with people from um, around that I get to meet on a day-to-day basis, um, inside and both outside. Um, you know, likes are not a measure of success. This is a pure, a pure example uh, and um, exaggeration, but grasp the concept. If I post a picture of me doing deadlifts with a shirt on, fortunately for some of you, um, educating you through something, you know, I might receive 
likes and I might receive shares and something like that, you know, nowhere near 5,000, but 5,000 is the example that I'm going to give. But if I'm standing there or if a female was standing there with, with a hat over her, my crown jewels or a, a hat over her kind of um, where the kind of term assets for a lot of people were used, that, that might get like 60,000. Like, what the fuck is that about? This is the world that we live in, which is ridiculous. Um, and this is why social media is a slow death. Um, you know, you're, you're not, you're not your parents, you're not your qualifications, you're not defined by your job, you're not the size of your network, your friends, um, the sum of your words and the choices are what you're defined as. Um, and I actually think this is from the Adams family. I think, uh, is it Herman? Um, and there's a, there's a saying that he wants you to, that he says, I think it's the Adams family, I might be wrong. Um, is it, is it doesn't matter what you look like, tall or short, fat or thin, ugly or handsome, like me. Um, but what does matter is the size of your heart and strength of your character. And it's, it's like, none of this stuff is, should be important through social media platforms of what people are telling you to do in terms of like, you know, 45 minute hit workouts and eat cabbage for a day and you lose 55 kilograms. And you're like, come on people, like see between the lines. Like it is our responsibility, I keep saying every single week to educate people in knowing to make better choices. Like we need to eradicate all this bullshit. A lot of us, uh, you know, have our own opinions of kind of the, what the world, uh, where the world is now and these things and of, of, of COVID and having our own opinions thinking like there's something going on, some, some of these things cut, don't add up, where do you get those numbers from, blah, blah, blah. I'm not dismissing any of that, but it's, in, in some respects, it's, it's, a, it's, the same, it's the same thing. Like, you know, these people, some of these people that come out with these bullshit things about trying these things and they post it, where, where the fuck do they get this shit from? Um, we we actually have responsibility, like as me as a gym owner, uh, and as a gym, and other fit, fitness professionals, we have responsibility to change the status quo of what, um, let's say, success looks like, or what um, you know should be advertised. Success isn't a six pack for me, and it should be for a lot of people. Success should be, in, and this is obviously my opinion. I'm not for, enforcing this on anyone, but just trying to open your eyes to be like, well, there's actually another way. Success should be inspiring people around you. You know, give them, giving people around you the opportunity and belief that you once might not have had. You know, you can't do ordinary things and expect to have an extraordinary life um, or or extraordinary results. Um, and last week I ended the podcast with, uh, with, with, with regards to like time. And I said, stop wasting it and that we're running out of it. And you have to think it is our most valuable asset, you know, just to re- reiterate, when you do waste your time, you don't get it back. We, we only get one shot of this. Um, and we all waste time in different ways. Like we do do it. Pro- we procrastinate, we watch Netflix, we scroll through Instagram, we, you know, upload TikTok, whatever it is that you do. But th- these things have no real benefit apart from taking us away kind of from like, you know, the stuff that's going on in the world. Um, but misuse of this is very detrimental to your health. And uh, what did we do before these social media platforms come out? Like, what, what would you do if you stand in the queue in a, in a shop and like, well, now with a face mask on, but what did you do before social media come out? You would sit, you would stand there, wait patiently. Um, you might be on the phone, but we wouldn't sit there, head down, you know, scroll it. Your, your thumb has probably clocked up more miles than your legs have in terms of uh, how far you've gone. Um, the other thing that is like it actually misleads us into thinking that we're you know utilizing um, our time uh, for good, but it's a silent killer. Like it, it really is. Um, if you're working hard, and I'm talking like truly working hard, like long long hours, and I want to clarify this. Um, so a lot, some of you will take this through your personal life, and some of this, will, some of you will take this through through fitness. Um, Working long hours is not a representation of how hard you're working. I'm talking about like actually grafting and ticking away actionable goals that you do daily. And now some people work eight hour weeks because that's their understanding of hard work. And they, but they won't do all the things they need to do in that week to win um, because they're so focused on, on the end result. Some of you will train 12 hours a week, if not more, if not more, and think that that's good enough to, to expect to be in shape and we almost have um, this level of entitlement because you work out so much. You're like, well, I'm entitled to, to eat this or I'm entitled to look good. But you won't put the focus on the other things that surround that. One hour workouts, for example, or sweating is not a sign of you working hard. Being beasted through workouts is not how you get fit. What, what, we have to understand this. Like, What is everyone's problem with this? And this is what social media will tell you. 
that you know burning calories and blah 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 and like you know 45 hit and this hit training and that like I have to um, sympathize uh, with people actually empathize as well with people um, and I know it's not their fault that you know we're here to educate and I do blame the industry and unfortunately when someone is vulnerable and doesn't know um, they're influenced quite quite highly like why, why does a long workout lead us to believe that that's hard work what because you sweat. You could sweat standing out in the sun. That does not mean that you've worked hard. Maybe look at monitoring your intensity for a heart rate monitor. Like, where's your heart rate for the duration? And I'm, you know, and it's probably nowhere near where it should be. Like, we all think, oh, you know, I want to do a long workout, I want to be beasted today. But actually, is there longevity in that? Could you do that for the next 25, 30 years of your life? Probably not. You might be able to do it for five. Yeah, and if you get someone who has done it for that time, look at their end result. Where are they now? Have they got a knee issue? Have they got a hip issue? Have they broken something? Mentally, are they, are they just fucked? Most probably. Um, most people underestimate how much, how much they eat and they overestimate how hard they work. Uh, remember, when I, remember I said how hard that they work, not how much. Yeah, that's the point. This takes education and years to master. Like, so when you're next working out, Look at heart rate for your for, for the duration. Look how hard you're working, not for how long you're working. It, you know, um, we need to think of this as intensity is something to be impressed by, not volume. Once you grasp intensity, then you can look at adding to volume to your training and doing those other things around training. Like it's not just the training element. Like I said before, um, you know, you got to do things that surround that. You have to eat very well you know, within all a balanced diet. You have to sleep. You have to do things uh, to help you recover. It's not just the case of, of working out. And once that clicks and you understand there is no end end time to fitness, that fitness doesn't stop, I'm telling you, you will win. You'll win because you'll stop chasing something that doesn't exist. But but on the, on the flip side, obviously, if you're that person who's ticking all those boxes and working towards that end result because you're completing daily actual goals, then you'll get there, you'll win. It's just a matter of time. You just have to stay consistent. I guarantee you're, you're already successful um, and you don't see it or you're on the path to, to, to that success. And that has a positive effect on other people. It's infectious. It, infectious. And this also does depend on the state of mind of the individual um, when, you're, when, when you are trying to infect someone uh, with the positive effect of exercise or how you are feeling you know you you will get those who are intimidated by what you do um in terms of what you're achieving and this could be fitness wise this could be in your career wh- however you want to look at it and maybe filled with a bit of jealousy there might even be ones who write bullshit behind the screens and that was what i was talking about last week in the podcast with regards to uh gym shark um, but guess what they are watching your progress they're even more of a hater than you thought they are and you might not even know about them, but some might not even interact through different platforms. But the, and they'll never say a word of encouragement. But just know that there are people watching you because you are succeeding. You're doing things that they could only dream of doing. And on the flip side, there, there's obviously the people you know that when you you have this positive, positive vibe about you in this aura, like it is infectious, and you have those those winners. Um, and these are people who are happy to see you win, and they 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 want you to keep winning. They'll clap for you, they'll cheer for you, um, they'll do whatever it takes. They'll support you. And the world would be a better place if we were all cheering each other on. But unfortunately, we get onto social media and um, we don't cheer each other on. And this is why I feel like um, smaller community-based gyms, I'm not necessarily just saying CrossFit gyms, um, gyms with a personal touch will have that element because everyone's going through that same emotion. Um, we do want to support each other. And I feel that if there was more truth to fitness, as in displayed publicly through, dare I say it, the word influencers, then we would encourage each other more and not maybe bring each other's down. But one day the people who didn't believe in you or trust you uh, will be the same person telling everyone how they know you or how they met you. What I want you to take away from this today is that every, not everything that you see on social media is real uh, or is the truth. Um, and there's a lot of people in very good, um, very good positions and influential positions such and someone that I listen to quite regularly is Gary Vaynerchuk and there are examples that he will give you and he will tell you that he has people that hate you know their life but on camera looks like they have the best possible life because we live in this world that is uh, 
instant gratification, how many likes, how many people are interacting. We need to come away from this. For you, in order for you to succeed, succeed, and I say go back to being able to inspire people to give that opportunity, be have that positive aura, help someone, whatever it might be, help them and work towards your daily goal. Don't think of, I'm chasing, remember we said a couple of weeks ago in the, one of the podcasts, you have a goal of losing 15 kilo. It doesn't have to be losing 15 kilo, just an example. Don't focus on the 15, focus on the one, or like one, one kilo 15 times and you'll get there but faster. It's not a shortcut, it's that you're in that, one, in that process of you learning to do one kilo times 15 and not just 15 kilos in one go. You'll learn a lot of lessons along that way. You know, the, 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 I'm a very small fish as in Percy's a business owner and the gym is a very small fish in a very big pond. Um, but there is, there's a lot of losses and a lot of things that I have learned as a business owner and me about myself as an individual that I wouldn't have learned had I just been given everything. You know, and that's from business, that's from life, you, you, and even fitness. You have to have a lot of losses to find out the wins because you learn about yourself. Failure is important. Don't be influenced by social media to the point where it's controlling your life. You want to remain in full control of everything that you do. Use it where it can um, give you ideas. Use it where you can maybe clap and cheer for other people. Um, but don't use it to the point where it abuses or you abuse it um, and it takes control and becomes infectious uh, in a negative way um, and it has that negative impact and the aura that you, you have.